Hey everyone, Chomix here. The Sonic series has a pretty large slew of bad guys. You got your head honcho Dr. Eggman, who appears in pretty much every game. Sometimes the game likes to mix it up a bit, throw a little curveball at us every once in a while. Every once in a while, we get a new sleek looking villain to go head to head against our heroes usually working alongside Eggman. For example, Sonic CD introduces us to our metallic doppelganger, Metal Sonic. Sonic Adventure has Chaos and his handful of increasingly powerful forms. And even in the latest game, Sonic Forces, we get introduced to Infinite, who is a character. Sonic faces off against Eggman all the time, but if he were the only villain in every game, it get pretty boring, I'm not gonna lie. These special villains are usually pretty refreshing, and add on to the already amazing list of stellar characters within the series. But out of all these special villain characters, there's one in particular that I want to talk about today. He's in a game that everyone loves. He's got one of the coolest designs of all time, a villain that has a very special place in my heart. Zavok. No, I'm, I'm just joking, I would never do that to you guys. Shadow. The Hedgehog. That, that's the one. Shadow is probably one of the most misunderstood characters by fans and even the game's writers. Shadow is usually depicted as this brooding, angsty, unfriendly dude that just hates fun and all things happy. Just take a look at his own spin-off game, Shadow the Hedgehog. Or maybe his depiction in this Team Sonic Racing cartoon short. Yeah, he's kind of a bully here, isn't he? This inaccurate characterization of Shadow has been going on for quite a while now and I think it first started in the game Shadow the Hedgehog for obvious reasons. He's been pretty absent from most recent games, but when he does briefly appear, these games still somehow manage to find time to spit on the characterization of Shadow. Because believe it or not, this edgy persona isn't really accurate to what his character should actually be like, at least according to the game he originates from, Sonic Adventure 2. This is not Shadow. This is not Shadow. Saving the world? You don't make me laugh. You're weak. And you know what makes you weak? Your loyalty to your pathetic friends. And this is definitely not Shadow. Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Okay, maybe that one might be Shadow just a little bit. But in order to prove it, I'd like to go over some great moments where Shadow is shown to actually have compassion. Because there's a handful of wholesome moments that come from this character that you'd never be able to guess from the examples I just showed. So let's dive right into it. As I explained just a bit ago, Sonic Adventure 2 is the game Shadow originates from, so his personality and character were established from this game and its events. Shadow goes through a complete character arc from start to finish, and an amazing one at that. In Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow goes from a ruthless villain seeking revenge on humanity for the death of Maria, to a selfless hero who nobly sacrifices himself in the end for Earth and all its people. But before Shadow transforms into this noble hero at the end of the game, there's a few small moments that happen throughout the course of the story that lead up to this moment. When things go south during a plan to steal a set of Chaos Emeralds from the military, Rouge ends up trapped during the final countdown of Eggman's bomb set to blow up the entire island the operation takes place on. Which quick tangent is so metal. Like, okay, Eggman, Rouge, and Shadow are going to this island, stealing the Chaos Emeralds in the military's possession, and then blowing up the entire thing just so they can't get caught. But then they announced to the world their plans to blow up the Earth immediately after. So really, they didn't even have to do this. But they still did, just because they could. Thousands of people literally died from this, like there's no way that there were no casualties. I guess all the enemies you fight on this island are robots, but we see in Rouge's boss fight against the gun mech Flying Dog that a human is in the cockpit. If there's someone piloting this robot, we have to assume that there are other humans on this island. There's no way it's just this one guy. But even if there aren't, this guy piloting the mech is screwed. At the very least, he's dead. Without a question. And at most, probably thousands more. So yeah, Eggman is ruthless. Anyways, haunted by glimpses of Maria's death, Shadow decides to go back for Rouge, and at the last second he grabs her and uses Chaos Control to warp off of the island right before it explodes. He tries playing it off as him just doing it for the Chaos Emeralds, 
but Rouge clearly sees right through this. This scene is great because it gives us our first glimpse that Shadow is capable of compassion, because up until this point, he's been depicted as purely hate-driven and selfish. Shadow going back to save Rouge is also huge foreshadowing for what he does at the end of the game. The huge wall that he's built in front of himself is finally starting to crack, and his true personality begins to leak out, even for just a moment. We can see this happen once more during the end of the game. With the arc on a collision course headed straight to Earth, Amy pleads for Shadow to help save the entire world and its people. Something in Amy's speech resonates with Shadow, helping him remember Maria's one true wish and Shadow's entire purpose for existing to give the humans on Earth a chance to be happy and live for their dreams. Shadow then promises to fulfill Maria's wish, as well as Amy's, and he decides to team up with Sonic and friends to help stop the Ark from colliding with the Earth. This is the moment where Shadow's true character returns. Because you see, it's not like Shadow was born a villain. He lived a peaceful life on the Space Colony Ark with Maria and Gerald Robotnik, and was even eager to go to Earth, meet its people, and experience it all with Maria. They would often ponder what life on Earth was like, and had dreams of living down there someday. But this peaceful life was abruptly ripped out of his hands due to the death of Maria, the only person to truly understand Shadow. This scarring event would completely shift Shadow's entire personality and motivations, and would transform him into something he never used to be. The true Shadow is the one from the flashbacks and at the end of the game. In the end, Shadow fulfills his promise to Maria by using the last remaining amount of his power to warp the Space Colony arc away, right before colliding with the Earth. Shadow would end up sacrificing himself during this final push to protect the planet. Shadow's sacrifice becomes the ultimate form of redemption for his character, because it undoes all of the wrongs he's committed throughout the game, as well as fulfills his promise to both Maria and Amy. you love to see it. But looking in retrospect, the revelations that Shadow has at the end of this game kind of just get ignored in future games. But there are a few other games that do manage to get his personality right, at least most of the time. Despite his apparent death in Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow would go on to appear in Sonic Heroes, which would prove to be a controversial choice among some fans. But to be fair, it was kind of a lose-lose situation for Sonic Team. Shadow became an instant fan favorite from his first appearance in SA2. Killing him off at the end of SA2 would give the story an amazingly memorable bittersweet ending, and would redeem Shadow's character in the perfect way. But on the other hand, not having Shadow return for future games would be probably the biggest missed opportunity of all time. I think bringing back Shadow had the potential to turn out fine, but I'll admit the game's reasoning and the way it's explained aren't the greatest. The reasons for his return are unclear at the beginning of Sonic Heroes, and throughout Team Dark's story, Shadow attempts to find the truth. By the end of the game, it's pretty much left up for interpretation if Shadow is either an android, a clone, or the original from SA2. When it comes to Shadow's personality, it's actually not so bad. Shadow has amnesia, so it makes sense that he wouldn't entirely remember the events of the previous game, which would in turn cause him to act how he does in Heroes. He isn't exactly a good guy in this game, but he definitely isn't a bad guy either. His main goal is to simply find out the truth of his existence, which may seem kind of selfish, but he does end up helping the rest of the cast defeat Metal Sonic by the end, so it's not like he's going out of his way to help or let the villain of the game take over the world. I think the way Shadow is depicted in this game is decent, all things considered. Since this game focuses on four separate teams, the story for each isn't as packed full of substance compared to SA2, so there aren't as many moments or opportunities to really show Shadow's softer personality. There are still a few, but they're more general than specific. Team Dark's general camaraderie is really nice to see. Rouge has a soft spot for Shadow, as they work together to help save the world back in Adventure 2. She really goes out of her way to help Shadow find the truth, and these two characters interact with each other like friends, especially when compared to SA2. Even Shadow and Omega have some good team chemistry going on throughout the story, of course after their initial bout at the beginning of the game. They're able to come together for a common cause, beating the shit out of Eggman. Sonic and Shadow also seem to have a pretty playful rivalry here. The two don't interact that much in this game, but when they do, they aren't at each other's necks like before. Overall, Sonic Heroes does a decent job of at least keeping Shadow's personality pretty tame, especially when compared to some of the other games. The only other game to really not butcher Shadow's character, and dare I say, do a pretty dang good job at following up his character arc, 
is Sonic 06. Yeah, I'm dead serious. The best moments of Sonic 06 really come from all of the stories but Sonic's, which is pretty ironic. Shadow's story in 06 is pretty meaty. There's quite a lot of cutscenes with plenty of opportunities to show off his character, and even explore some interesting plot points about some of the aftermath of his actions in Sonic Adventure 2. During Shadow's story, he comes face to face with Mephilus, an evil creature taking the distorted form of Shadow, who tries to convince Shadow to join him in awakening the fiery, world-destroying monster, Iblis. Mephilus attempts to coerce Shadow by explaining the events of the future that will eventually unfold. According to Mephilus, in the end humanity will turn against Shadow, as they believe him to be the reason for Iblis' awakening, and still fear him for how he previously terrorized the Earth. Because of this, Shadow should join Mephilus to put a stop to these inevitable events, and get revenge on the world. But because this game is actually good at understanding Shadow's character, he states that even if the world were to turn against him, he would still fight to protect them because this was his promise to Maria. On top of this great scene, the aftermath of this event leads to one of the best moments of the entire series. Rouge and Omega assure Shadow that even if humanity does turn against him like Mephilus says, they would stick by his side until the end. And you can really feel that Shadow understands this and he treats his teammates with this exact same respect. One more very symbolic moment comes in the form of a side mission and I think a lot of people really overlook this one. Right before the final level of Shadow's story, the town of Soliana is attacked by Iblis's minions. Shadow and team rush to the rescue of the townspeople and save the entire town from this assault. Shadow's heroic actions here work to symbolically reverse the inevitable events that Mephilus foretold. It enforces the idea that Shadow is on the side of humanity and works to protect them, not threaten them with his power. Altogether, Sonic 06's depiction of Shadow is a really solid one, and explores a completely new and refreshing character arc after the events of SA2. Shadow the Hedgehog is without a question one of the most popular characters from the series, but he manages to be one of the most, if not the most, misunderstood character. Shadow is depicted nowadays to be extremely cold and angsty, which is not what his character is about. His revelation at the end of Adventure 2 helped him realize his true purpose for existing, but it really seems that this concept was completely forgotten about. You wouldn't know it by just looking at Shadow's personality nowadays. But he's capable of compassion and having meaningful and heartfelt interactions with other characters. In some ways, I feel that bringing back Shadow after Adventure 2 was a huge mistake. We've been able to get some good moments since, but the majority of his inclusions completely botch his character. I really like Shadow's character and I want to see him continue to appear in future games. But the way his character is handled needs to change. I think the writers have lost sight on who Shadow really is. And the first step to fixing him is to realize that he does, in fact, have a softer and more sensible side to his personality. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked the video, smash that like button, and if you really want to do me a solid, hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be the first to know when I upload a new video. In the comments below, let me know your favorite wholesome Keanu Ryu Shadow the Hedgehog moment. And to keep this discussion going further, make sure to join the community discord. Link to that in the description. And finally, I'd love to give a huge shout out to my backers. They're the biggest reason I can keep pumping out videos on a weekly basis. If you'd also like to back me, I have the link to that in the description, or you can just press the join button below this video. Backers get a few cool exclusive perks, so hit the join button if you want more details on that. And without further ado, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.